So another quick one. Uh, there was a post on the Facebook group Basehead Life about Neo Woofers, and I posted a picture of my digital designs Z415s, which attracted a comment by Jordan. And he said, The only thing I don't get about the Neo subs is how they are so much louder. I understand they take a crazy amount more power, but the surrounds aren't all huge, and neither are the baskets. So, how does just adding more power make it much louder? So when I read that comment, I realized that Jordan is of the impression that to make a sub louder, you just have to make it move more. And that's not the case whatsoever. So I then responded by saying, I'm going to PM you with a voice clip explaining all about this. Hopefully it helps. And I sent him a range of voice clips and a little video at the end to demonstrate why adding more power to a subwoofer's motor or coil uh, can make it louder without necessarily asking it to move more. And after Jordan had listened to those voice clips, he then said, that's the best explanation of subwoofers I've ever heard. You taught me so much and I really appreciate you taking the time to explain it. And then I got a bunch of other comments from other guys saying, hey Sam, send me that PM if you don't mind. Could you possibly send this, the, the clip to me too? Can you send it to me? So many people wanted me to send them those voice clips as well to gain information, to kind of gain a, a better understanding of how subwoofers work, how different boxes work, and why the excursion is not the true limiting factor to loudness. So rather than try and forward those uh, voice clips to everyone, which is difficult, I thought I'd make a quick video here to explain it. So Jordan's understanding of the loudness of a subwoofer being limited by its excursion range for a given size of subwoofer is true to an extent for sealed application only. When you have a sealed box, you are listening to the air displaced solely by the cone. So the more the cone moves in and out, the more air displacement and compression and decompression is going to be in the cabin that you're listening to. When the subwoofer is sitting in the box in its resting position and you just got in the car, there is neutral pressure in the cabin. You're just sitting there, there's no extensive pressure or anything, no sound whatsoever. When the sub moves outwards, okay, when the cone moves outwards, it then takes up some small amount of space of the cabin that it wasn't taking up before. This increases the air pressure in the cabin ever so slightly, causing your eardrums to push in ever so slightly, and you notice that as a change in pressure. And then when the subwoofer moves inwards, sucks into the box, it then moves, it then kind of creates a bit more airspace in the cabin that wasn't there before resting point and your eardrums then come out slightly due to the slight uh, change in pressure, slight drop in pressure and then doing that many many times equates to a sine wave and you hear bass. So with a sealed box naturally the more that the cone can move in and out the more air it can compress and decompress in the cabin space which will equate to louder bass. Now naturally throwing more power at a subwoofer in a sealed box is going to ask it to, to go further outwards and further inwards so with a sealed subwoofer you want like really big surrounds, lots and lots of, of travel so that it can displace that air mechanically with the cone. But there becomes a point when you don't really need that much excessive power to get the cone to move in and out. With a sealed application, you can have a really weak woofer like this move the same amount in a large box as a really powerful woofer in a small box. The benefits of having a powerful subwoofer in a sealed box means that your sealed box doesn't need to be as big because the power of the woofer can overcome compressing the air inside the sealed box and the air inside the sealed box acts like its, uh, its own air suspension which will help aid the punchiness and response and control of the woofer uh, but also nice and convenient that you've got a nice small box there. If you don't have a very powerful woofer you can just make the box much bigger so the woofer has to work less hard compressing the air actually inside the box and it can then focus on just compressing the air in the cabin space that you're listening to it in but if the woofer doesn't have great control over it because there's no air cushion or, or air spring behind it you can end up with a kind of sloppy response and so the woofer parameters are quite important there. Infinite baffle is something you may have heard of if you're into SQ or you may have seen the proper SQ guys running infinite baffle setup where the woofer doesn't have an enclosure behind it. It's playing to the free world and you are solely listening to the, 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 the sound pressure radiating off the front of the cone in the cabin. The woofer doesn't have an air spring behind it at all. So the woofer parameters are very critical and you can get stupid loud and fantastic sounding bass with very, very little power. You don't need much power for infant baffle setup because you're not driving against any force. All, you, all you're trying to do is just compress the air in the listening space, be that the cabin, um, and you're just listening to the cone. You don't need a lot of power for that. So in a sealed box application or an infinite baffle application, the defining factor as to how loud the subwoofer will be 
is defined by its mechanical excursion stroke. And there becomes a point with that where adding more power doesn't really give you any benefits other than being able to put it in a smaller box. This is why you don't really find many super high powered woofers designed for sealed box. Like I think the JL Audio stuff, like the W7s, are really the, the kind of highest power, solely sealed box kind of designed woofers. I mean, they, they even make the, 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 the ported boxes for them, but they work fantastically in a sealed box. And they are kind of tuned to work well in a sealed box. And that's about the thousand watts RMS range. Any more than that and you don't really gain any benefits. Now, ported boxes are a completely different ball game and this is why you have these subs with ridiculously powerful coils and monstrously powerful fixed motors like this. In a ported box, when you are playing at or around tuning frequency, you are predominantly not listening to air pressurized from the cone. You're not listening to waves radiating, radiating from the cone itself. What you're doing is you're listening to air displaced by the port. In a ported box, the port takes over from the woofer. You need to think of the port like a subwoofer with an infinite excursion stroke because it has no mass, it has no physical cone, it has no physical suspension, so it doesn't have any physical constraints as to how much air it can displace. So if you think about an eight inch aeroport, okay, then that eight inch aeroport is like an eight inch sub without any physical constraints to how much it can move in and out. It just has infinite excursion range. So naturally, even though it's only eight inches, it can displace an absolute crap ton more air than an eight inch or even 12 inch or perhaps 15 inch sub can displace because it has no physical limitations on how much air it can displace. But how does it do that? How does it take over from the woofer and displace air for it? You'll notice if you've ever messed around with ported boxes and tuning frequency and stuff like that, you will have noticed, and if you haven't, try this out for yourself. If you play tuning frequency on a test tone in your subwoofer system, you will find that your woofer cone doesn't move much. It's barely moving. Yeah, it's moving very, very little. However, you feel the air coming out of the port. It is very, very strong. You get a hurricane out of the port for very much, very little cone movement. And the way that that works can kind of be shown with a ruler or a pendulum with a weight on a string. I'm going to use a ruler here for this example. Let's show you a sealed box first. So if we grip the ruler tightly, my hand is the subwoofer cone and the bottom of the ruler is the air displaced that you're going to be listening to. In a sealed box, the air displaced is fixed to the cone movement. So you're not gonna get any more air displaced than the amount that you can move the cone physically. I can only physically move it that much and so that's not how much air I'm getting displaced. However, in a ported box, the port is tuned to a specific frequency where it will resonate and it will take over from the cone. Like this, get a ruler and put your fingers in the hole so you can swing it, okay? Now, if I swing this ruler at the ruler's pendulum resonant frequency, look at this. I can get a buttload of displacement that we're gonna listen to out of the port for barely any cone movement. At this tuning frequency, I need to move the cone barely anything to get a huge displacement on the bottom. And I'm still putting energy into this system. Like I, I'm still, you know, I am applying energy to my hand, but I'm applying it just at the right moment where it translates that energy into a swing at the bottom of the ruler. If I change the frequency, so if I now play away from, from the tuning frequency of this, you can see that it doesn't really work. Now, the woofer starts moving loads and loads, but I'm not getting any displacement at the port. The whole thing has broken down. The whole tuning, the whole resonance doesn't work at this high frequency. Um, this is like the woofer is unloaded, and this is why it's quite dangerous, because now I have there's no air spring, like in a sealed box. There's nothing to protect the woofer from over excursion as an air spring, like in a sealed box and you're relying on just the physical suspension of the subwoofer, the spider and the surround to prevent it ripping itself to part. Whereas if we slow the frequency down and we play closer to port tuning frequency, you can still, now it's now it's sort of starting to work. I've still got some cone displacement. I've got a little bit of displacement out of the port. And if I slow it down even further, now we're getting more displacement out of the port than we're putting in on the cone. And if I play the exact tuning frequency, we get a buttload of displacement out of the port and barely any cone movement. But I'm still putting energy into this, okay? So in order to get this to swing even more, if like this is this is basically how loud your system's gonna be, how much air 
where it can displace. If I want this to move crazy amounts, then I just need to apply more energy into here. And it, I don't need this to move much. I don't need my hand to move a lot. If I just get this going, look, I can make this swing absolute crazy, even all the way around on itself with very, very little movement in my hand, but I need to apply more energy to it. And that is the reason that you can have horrendous amounts of power in a subwoofer that's in a ported box and you don't need it to have monstrous excursion range because you are transferring that energy that you're giving the subwoofer into displacement of air out of the port. It's not being converted directly into cone movement. The cone is being loaded. It's almost like the port puts a big weight on the cone and stops it moving and it, it turns that energy that the cone has into pure air displacement out of the port. Now in the real world you want to play music you don't just want to play port tuning frequency so you want it to be loud at a range of frequencies and that's where the woofer excursion can come into play in a ported box because either side of a box tuning um, the excursion of the woofer starts becoming more of what you listen to so dead on tuning frequency you're pretty much listening to the port and just the port but maybe three to four or five hertz either side, the port sort of stops working so well and you the, the cone of the woofer starts moving more and so you start listening to more air that's being displaced by the cone than you are the port. So with a subwoofer that can move more, you end up getting a better bandwidth because you can play further outside of uh, port tuning frequency and still have a decent bass by listening to the air displaced by the cone rather than just by the port. Whereas if you've got like, an, like old SPL woofers, that have very tiny surrounds and very tiny spiders but huge motors and really strong coils they're designed to pretty much just play tuning frequency or a couple of hertz around those like burp woofers and that's why they're so strong and potent on the meter at a specific frequency but they don't really play lows or like they don't really play super loud demos and music so well because they just don't have enough excursion to, to maintain that amount of uh, air pressure in the cabin from the cone itself they need a port load in order to work so naturally, with a woofer that's designed for being running ported boxes, um, in order to give that cone more energy to transfer into air displacement out of the port, um, a woofer moves because of magnetic repulsion and attraction. And it's made up of two parts, the fixed magnet, which is the thing that the, uh, the thing's going to attract and repel against, and the woofer coil, which is an electromagnet. Now, if you want to make it louder and you want to give the cone more energy, uh, to push against the port, then you need to either make the motor ridiculously strong, the fixed magnet ridiculously strong, or you need to make the electromagnet ridiculously strong, or both. And that's what you find in these really, really high uh, extreme kind of woofers, really freaking heavy woofers that will have massive eight layer voice coils that can handle ridiculous amounts of power. You've got a big fixed motor and a big electromagnet is going to translate into horrendous amounts of pushing force of the cone that needs to be controlled by a decent enough port load to stop the woofer from just ripping itself to shreds. Uh, I think that's pretty much covered everything I sent in the voice clips. Um, this is not planned, I haven't scripted this, I just wanted to sit down and redo the voice clips in a video format because it's impossible to, to forward them to like hundreds of people. So I thought I'd just do a video instead. Um, this is not an exhaustive uh, explanation whatsoever. I've missed out loads and I've simplified loads, but I didn't want this to be like a half hour long video. I just wanted to kind of maybe plant a few seeds in your head and start a few thought processes going about, okay, why are some woofers designed how they are? How do ported boxes actually work? Why was my system loud? then and it's not louder now or why is that different and just kind of give you some base information to start your own thought processes off and you know gain some knowledge.